Okay, guys, U4, A3, Unit 4, Activity 3. We're going to look around with uh, making connections between uh, more linear graphs and linear equations and that sort of thing. So uh, what I thought I'd do today was, uh, for this session, was actually go through the homework. So, and hopefully it'll address some of the issues uh, that may have uh, come up during the activity. So let's look here, state the degree of each of the following and identify it as a linear or nonlinear relation. So what you're looking for here is the highest power on the x uh, variable. So y is equal to x squared, and this is 2x. So this would have a power of 1 here, and there's no x here. Uh, so the biggest one is this, is 2. So this would be a degree of 2. And anything above a degree of 1 is not linear. This is, in fact, quadratic. So this has degree of 2, and it's not linear. So no. Here, it doesn't matter if we're, if we're in the right order, the y equals mx plus b order, or standard form, or anything, anything. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the question is, well, let's take a look at the power on the x. So you can ignore the 3 and just look at this right here. Is there a squared? Is it cubed? Is it anything? No, it's not. It's just x or x to the 1. So it would have a degree of 1, and degrees of 1 are, in fact, linear. So yes. Um, I don't know if it's yes or what... Uh, I guess it would be linear, yeah, right, linear there. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to keep erasing my answers here just to keep it kind of clean. Rearrange these the following into uh, this form, y equals mx plus b form. Again, the reason we do this is once we have in this form, we know the slope, we know the y-intercept, and then we have some information. This is fine, but I don't, I don't have any info here. There's nothing here that's saying, oh, this line looks like that, or oh, this line is steeper than that line, or... Or, or it starts higher or starts lower, that sort of thing. But once we get in this form, we can compare. So if we start off with 3x uh, minus 6y plus 8 is equal to 0, what we want is y by itself. Now, I would do this personally. Once I, If I have a negative, uh, you're going to move the y's on one side and the everything else, the x's and the constants on the other side. What I would do is I would move, the, uh, I would move it determine which way to put the y's based on where will y be positive. I just don't want to deal with this negative if I don't have to. So there's a negative 6y here. If I move it across the equal sign, it's subtracting from everything else on this side. It will add when I bring it on this side. Okay, so this is 3x plus 8 is equal to 6y. You could do the other way around. You can move the 3x and the, and the 8, but everything would have a negative involved with it. And then you got to deal with the negative. So I'd rather just keep it like this. So I have... 3x plus 8 is equal to 6y. Now I want y by itself. Uh, it's by itself as far as, as the x and the constant are across from it. But um, I have a 6 beside it, so that's not good. So I have to divide by 6, and I will not divide the whole thing by 6. I could just put a line here and 6 underneath, but that won't put me in the right form. So what you want to do is you want to divide each part here, the 3 by 6, and you want to divide the 8 by 6. Okay, so... Uh, this way, it just kind of, uh, I'm already in y equals mx plus b form. I have y is equal to a number times x plus b. Now, we can simplify this a little bit. 3, 6 is a, is a half, so you can do this, or you can half. Fractions are great. Okay, so 0.5x plus, and then the lowest terms, this is 4 thirds, or you can put 1 and 1 third. It doesn't really matter. Uh, e, e, uh, any of them is great. Don't, don't tell me this is 1.3 because it's not 1.3. It's close to 1.3. But it's not. So any fraction, so maybe I should have left this as uh, one half. But the thing is, any decimal, any fraction that terminates, so 3 over 6 is 0 0.5, and it stops. That I can write as a decimal. Any one that does not, like this one here, is, is 1.333 continuum, continuous. Um, that you want to keep as a fraction. Okay, so here a little bit weird because I have a decimal and a fraction, but there's nothing wrong with this. Okay, there's mx slope of this y-intercept of that. So if I was to graph this, 4 thirds is just over 1. So if that was 1 and that was 2, 4 thirds is here. And the slope of, of 0.5 means my rise over run is 0 0.5, or that is over 2, up 1. Positive means go up, and then uh, like that. Or I could go over 1, up a half. Same way, same thing, I'd have the same one. Okay, arrows on both sides. Of okay, let's keep going. It might get a little loud. There's a, We just had a bell go in class. Let's keep going. I'm going to rush... Uh, Whip through, not rush, whip through this. So if I have minus 2x minus 5y minus 2 is equal to 0. Again, this is a negative here, so I'm going to bring the 5y over, and that will make it positive. I have minus 2x minus 2. It won't matter in this case because I have a bunch of negatives. 
Uh, and then what I'll do now in the next step, I'll divide by five and divide this by five. So I have negative two fifths X, subtract two fifths. So my, that's my intercept. I would start at two fifths or 0 0.4. And then I would go over five down two. So this is your rise and over your run. Okay. So when you want to plot this, you want to go, you want to run five. Okay. And then you want to rise negative two or go down two. So that's how you, you plot this point And then you plot the next point, connect the dots. And there's your line. Okay. Ascending order of steepness. So sometimes these, these can be a bit confusing if negatives get involved, but in this case, there are. So ascending order of steepness means from most steep, uh, sorry, from least steep to most steep. Okay. So the least steep, let's just clean this up here. This is mx plus b, mx plus b. This is mx plus b. It looks a little weird though. So this is 1x plus 0. Okay. So that has a slope of 1. And, and what one thing you want to note is that we're talking about steepness. We're talking about the slope, not the intercept. It doesn't matter if I have a line that is steep and another line that is just as steep and another line that is just as steep. It doesn't matter. This isn't any steeper because it starts here or it has an intercept here or it has an intercept there. Okay. Steepness is based on, uh, on the two. So what you're looking for is, is ascending. So we want to get bigger. This has a 1. That would be the same. So these two would be the same. They'd have a slope of 1. This one's less, so this would be the first, the lowest. Then these two would be tied for second, and then the steepest guy is the biggest one here because there's a 15. Okay, all of them are positive, so all of them will go up like this. And don't forget, positive up, we read left to right, so a line that goes up starts here, and as we go to the right, it goes up like this. Okay, that's an upward graph, that's a downward graph, that's a positive slope, that's a negative slope. So let's clean this guy up again, and let's get the slope and the y-intercept. Slope here is one. Y intercept 100. Slope here is 2. Y intercept is negative 5. Slope here is 0.5. Y intercept of <coughs> nothing. Okay? I have nothing here. Okay? So you got to be careful. If there's nothing in front of the X, the slope is 1, because this is supposed to be, this is inferred as 1X. And then if I have MX plus B, so here's the form MX plus B. If I have nothing in front of the X, that's 1X. And if I have nothing here, that's plus 0. So a little bit different, right? When we multiply something by 1, it stays the same. When we add something, when we add zero to something, it stays the same. So it's slightly different there. Okay. Uh, let's make some equations. So ten dollars per bucket. So if you're, well, let's just keep it as uh, as um, as I'm just going to keep it as y as an x is. Okay. Uh, you can change them to to cost and b here and that sort of thing. But ten dollars per bucket will be ten dollars per bucket. Okay. I start at ten. One bucket is ten. Two buckets is 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 twenty, and you keep going. So it's a multiple. Uh, what you want to look for is what is added here or subtracted here, this would be a base cost. Okay, so if, if it said, hey, you go drive in the driving range, it costs you a dollar to get in there, and then $10 a bucket. Well, the dollar is a fixed cost, and this is what we call a variable cost. Okay, uh, car agency is $100 plus $100 right away. So you rent a car, it costs you 100 bucks. So that's this part here, 100 bucks. So if I was to graph this, my intercept is 100. I start at 100, and then it goes higher like this way, right? But I started at 100, my intercept's 100, so that's 100. And that's your fixed cost plus this per kilometer, 30 cents per kilometer. So you can put it like this, 0 0.3, 0 0.30 times your uh, your distance, or in this case, I'm just going to use x, up to you. Okay. For all these, you would define what was going on here. You would say x, let x represent the, the distance driven and let y represent the cost. Uh, floor and sellers charge 50 bucks plus $1 per, per, you're looking for per, per. That is going to be your slope, okay, $50 to get in, uh, $50 to come to your house, which makes sense, okay, they, they charge you a flat rate, the plumber does the same thing, they charge you maybe $50 to come over, and then whatever per hour, and this is the same thing, floor and sellers cost 50 bucks just to show up to your house, and then as they start putting in the floor, they, they charge you $1 per uh, square meter, okay, so this would, uh, X would, in this case, would be the number of square meters uh, installed. $15 to show up, and the variable rate is 0 0.12 times x. Okay, so right here, explain the sequence of the equation, da, 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 where it's in every cost of a car repair. So we're going to look at this as a car repair. What's fixed, what's variable? This is fixed. If I show up, so let's graph this again. 20 bucks is where you start. That's your intercept. Okay, and, and we're going up over 1, up 50 each time. Okay, so if I was there for, for an hour, I would charge $50 extra, so it would be 70 bucks. So this would be your fixed cost. $20 is your fixed cost. And $50 is your rate per hour, your cost per hour. Okay, hope that makes sense. Any questions, fire me an email. Take care.